What's good? Welcome back or to the channel. Right now is the prime time to be buying you snowmobiles. Snow's already flying up north and out west and it's getting closer to that time of year. It is also the prime time to get ripped off buying a used snowmobile. But lucky for you guys, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how not to get ripped off when buying a used snowmobile. And trust me guys, I have made multiple mistakes buying snowmobiles and dirt bikes, especially when you don't know what you're looking for. With how crazy the used sled market is right now in today's world, there are a lot of people asking a lot of money for junk sleds. And I just wanna make sure that none of you guys end up paying Paying that ridiculous amount for a junk sled. We're gonna be using my 2022 Skidoo Summit 85154 as our used sled that we are going to look at and we're gonna go through the entire process of inspecting a used sled before making an offer. So assuming that you already know what sled you want and you're ready to go look at it, this is what we're gonna do. So say you're looking at a 2011 Pro RMK 800. What you're gonna do before you even take the time out of your day to go look at a sled, hop on Google. Google is gonna be your best friend and type in 2011 Pro RMK issues, 2011 Pro RMK recalls, 2011 Pro RMK reliability. Hop on the forums, hop on Snow West, hop on Hardcore Sledder, hop on John D. See what people are saying about that sled before you even consider going to look at it because if there's a lot of issues with the sled you may want to choose a different sled because you might be buying someone else's problems so let's say that you found the sled you want you googled it everything checks out seems like it's gonna be okay and you're ready to go look at the sled what do you want to bring with you the number one thing that you need to bring with you when you are going to look at a used power sport especially a snowmobile is a flashlight i'm using this pen light here but honestly any flashlight will do another good thing to bring with you if you're going to look at a used snowmobile is a friend because you never know what's going to go down when you go to these deals especially when there's cash involved and it's always good to have a second set of eyes on the machine you're going to look at and the third thing to bring is optional because i know most people don't have this but a compression gauge would be ideal if you have it to check the compression of the motor say me and you are here right now looking at the sled this is the one you are looking to buy what we're going to start off first is doing a complete walk around of the sled see if there's any obvious damage or obvious things wrong with it so we're going to start in the front here and bust out our flashlight and check out the a arms and suspension make sure nothing looks bent so okay everything looks good here all straight a arms are straight shock looks straight upper arm looks straight spindle looks good now we're gonna come over to the hood take a look at the hood make sure everything is in line make sure your body panels on the sides are in line make sure the bumper doesn't have any signs of impact make sure just overall the front of the sled everything looks square and put together which right now it does now we're gonna come over to this side and check out the suspension once again upper a arm looks good lower a arm looks straight and good shock looks good spindle looks good and then we're going to come over to this side and check this panel make sure everything lines up as you can see the body panel gaps are pretty good here pretty even so it doesn't show any signs of a wreck check out this side of the sled now what you want to look for is big dents in the running boards or kinks in the tunnel so over here everything looks good not a lot of scratches check to see if your seat has any tears or signs of excessive wear which it doesn't, this seat's in good condition. And now we're gonna follow our running boards with our light and make sure we don't see any kinks or bends that may have been hidden in pictures. And these running boards look pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is follow the tunnel as well and make sure we don't see any kinks or bends showing a sign of a hard impact. This tunnel does have some bends in it, but these are from the factory for the link adapter, so nothing to worry about here. Rear bumper looks straight, no kinking down here. A lot of times on these long tracks, these tunnels like to kink here, no kinking here. Now we're gonna to come to the back of the sled and take a good look at the sled and make sure everything looks square. And what I mean by that is it doesn't look like anything's off to one side or the other, or the tunnel doesn't look twisted or bent, and we are taking a good look here and everything looks good. Once again, go to your rear bumper, make sure it doesn't show any signs of impact. This one looks pretty straight. Everything is even and square. The process we just did on this side to inspect this side of the sled, we're gonna come over here and do it on this side. Once again, take your flashlight, look at the tunnel real close, make sure there's no kinks or bends out of the ordinary. Check your running boards, make sure there are no kinks or bends out of the ordinary, everything looks good. And now we're gonna get to this panel here. We already checked that side, we're gonna check this side. We're gonna make sure everything lines up, making sure there are no signs of a hard impact on this side. And everything looks good, all the panels line up. Now obviously there are some scratches here we noticed, those are just from like pine trees or something, no big deal. Then what you're gonna wanna do is hop on the sled and stand over the sled make sure your handlebars are as straight as possible and make sure that your skis are even and what i mean by even is this tip of the ski is even with this tip of the ski not one is further than the other one is cocked because if that is the case that could be a sign of bulkhead damage that you cannot see so we're going to hop back on the sled and just double check that those skis are even which they are so we are in good shape now that you're on the sled, you just want to inspect the dash, inspect the compartments, make sure everything shuts, opens, closes, does what it needs to do, which it does. 
You're gonna wanna feel the brake and make sure the brake has good pressure in it. This one feels phenomenal. You're gonna wanna come over here to the throttle and make sure that feels good. Make sure it doesn't stick, which it doesn't. Make sure your kill switch works. Now what you're gonna do that you're on the sled is take your handlebars and go like this. Just shake it side to side, back and forth and see how much play there is in the steering. This sled is extremely tight, so there are no issues with the steering here. But a lot of times, some sleds, especially older ones, will have a lot of play in the steering, which is no good. One way we could check to make sure there is no frame damage to the sled is start on one side and look at your spacing between your shock and your arm. What you could do is stick your hand in there, and this only goes up to my knuckle, so that is the space on this side. Come over to the other side and do the exact same thing in the exact same place and see where your hand stops and it is identical. So obviously this chassis is pretty straight. We just completed our exterior inspection of the sled, just a very basic once over to make sure there are no apparent issues to the point where we don't wanna look at it any further. And the sled has passed our inspection. There has been no issues that raise any red flags. Now it is time to look underneath the sled and inspect the track, the skis, the carbides, the belly pan, and so on. Once you have the sled on the side, it is a perfect opportunity to inspect everything underneath the sled to make sure you know what you're getting. So we're gonna start here with the skis. Now you wanna check your skis, make sure there are no signs of it being worn through or burned through because they ran bad carbides. And you also wanna inspect your carbides. Now if you take a look here, these are pretty well done. The actual carbide on these is pretty much gone and these will need to be replaced. Keep in mind, replacing carbides is about 80 to 120 bucks or more depending upon which ones you go with. So definitely something you wanna keep in mind. But overall, the ski looks to be in good shape. I don't see any signs of premature wear on the ski. So the ski is safe. While you're down here, you can also inspect the other ski and carbide. Once again, the ski looks good, carbide shot. So this sled needs a new pair of carbides. While we're on the front of the sled, check out the belly pan. See if it looks like it's taken any impacts or rubbed against anything really hard and it is looking pretty good. There's some scratches down here, probably from running over baby trees or whatnot, but overall the bulkhead and the actual chassis itself looks extremely straight. These A-arms still look straight, which is an awesome sign, and nothing looks out of whack or out of the ordinary. Also take a look around your exhaust, make sure there's nothing weird going on there, which there's not, everything looks good to go here. And once again, like I was talking about, there are some scrapes, minor scrapes though, nothing to be concerned about. Now we're gonna inspect the expensive part, the track and the skid. If you need a new track on your snowmobile, you're looking at upwards of $800 to $1,200 or more, depending upon the track you go with. So it is crucial to make sure that your track is in good shape before you make an offer on the sled. Otherwise you will be spending way more money than you expected to spend in the first place. So inspecting this track, it has a 2.5 inch paddle. These look good here. I don't see any signs of ripping or tearing, but we come over here and we have lost a lug and this is not good. When you see the weave like this, the track has potentially been compromised and you are probably gonna wanna replace the track before riding on it. Now missing one or two lugs is okay if the rubber is still showing, but when they rip off completely like this and the weave is showing, that is a sign of no good. So as you can tell right here, we had two missing lugs back to back. So obviously the track was caught up spinning on something like a log or a rock, causing these to rip off. But so far, the rest of them look okay. You can see the rest of the lugs through here. And what you gotta do is just basically take note of the pattern of the lugs and see if you see anything out of the ordinary that you're gonna wanna check out which I am not. Also inspect the coolers on your tunnel to make sure there are no signs of damage, which these look really good. While you have it on the side, inspect the rails on the skid and see if there are any bends or cracks, cause that would be a sign that you need to replace the rails on your skid. And once again, that can get pretty costly. So far so good, don't see anything here. No even signs of a fracture or nothing, which is good. Check this side, looking good, looking good, looking good. No issues here on the rails of the skid. Now you wanna check your bogey wheels or idler wheels, whatever you call them for any excessive play. That seems okay. That seems okay. On a mountain sled, you don't have a whole lot of these. On a trail sled, your skid will be loaded with them. So you wanna make sure you check each and every one of them because if they're bad, you will need to replace them. From our under inspection of the sled, everything in the front looks good besides it needing carbides and the track we are missing two lugs the track may be compromised so we might want to consider getting a new track so if you do consider making an offer on the sled factor in the fact that you got to spend 80 to 100 bucks on carbides and 800 to 1200 dollars on a track that's just for parts not including labor unless you do it yourself so keep that in mind before you continue with the investigation now that we are okay with everything we are seeing on our initial investigation of the sled both the walk around and underneath it is time to actually start the sled 
and see how it sounds running and see if all the controls work while it is on. I'm not gonna start the sled this video because you won't be able to hear me talk, but instead we're gonna pretend that the sled is running and I'm gonna walk you through the steps of everything you need to check while the sled is running. Quick note before you start the sled yourself is pull one of these body panels and feel the exhaust and see if the sled is running prior to you getting there. If the sled was started before you get there, that could be a major red flag. Now, why that's a red flag is maybe the sled has an issue starting when it's cold. It needs starting fluid to get going or it doesn't idle very well when it's cold or a flat out is just a pain to start when it's cold. And that can lead to a various amount of issues. So you wanna make sure the sled is cold when you get there. Make sure it starts up okay cold. Make sure it idles okay when it's cold. Bottom line is you don't wanna show up and the sled already been running. Before you start a used sled, especially one you don't know, make sure the throttle is not sticking. Give it some pulls. Make sure it goes back to its original location because if you start this sled and the throttle is stuck, the sled's gonna take off and that's no good. Assuming the throttle's not sticking and the engine's cold, we are now about to start the sled and bam, the sled is running and it is on and these are the things you're gonna wanna check. So while the sled's running, see how it started cold, see how many pulls it took, see how it idles cold, make sure it's not fluctuating RPM, super crazy at idle, make sure it's not running rough. Anything that may not sound normal probably isn't. Now that the sled is running, you wanna test your features. Now go through your dash and see if all the features work. Check the hours, check the miles, check everything you can on the display to make sure it works. Then you're gonna come over to your hand warmers if you have them and check the settings. Check the low setting, make sure the low setting works. Check the high setting, make sure the high setting works. Then you're gonna check your lights. Make sure your normal lights work, make sure your high beams work. Here's another time when it would help to have a buddy with you is while the sled is running, you wanna make sure your brake light works so people behind you can see when you're braking, especially at night. So while the sled is running, Pull the rear brake and make sure the brake light lights up, indicating the brake light works. If your sled is equipped with electric start or in my case, shot start, make sure to shut the sled off after it has ran and use the electric start or the shot start to make sure that is functioning properly. And once you have done all that, if you can't go for a test ride because there is no snow, you want to lift up the back of the sled or somehow support it and give it a few light revs. Make sure the clutch is engaged, make sure the track spins freely and there are no issues with that. And if your sled is equipped with reverse, you also want to double check that your reverse is working. Also, make sure that your kill switch works. And if you have a tether, your tether works as well because that is a safety feature and it is great to have. Once you verify that everything is working on the sled properly while the sled is running, now it is time we kill the sled, open up the side panels, and check around the motor and see if we see any leaks or any apparent issues. This is where your flashlight comes really in handy because you are gonna use this flashlight and peek around everywhere in the motor. Look for leaks, look for anything loose, look for rat's nest, bird's nest, anything out of the ordinary you don't wanna see in your snowmobile. This one, the coolant is just a little bit low. It is sitting about right here and it should be up here. So note taken, we need to add coolant. And we have a stock exhaust, so it is kind of hard to see the motor, but we can take a peek around in here and just kind of see if we see anything out of the ordinary, which right now we are not. I am not seeing any signs of any burns, any leaks, any animals, nothing like that. So everything seems to be good over here. That was the exhaust side. Now we're gonna check out the clutch side and there's a couple more things you wanna investigate on the clutch side opposed to the exhaust side. Now that we're on the clutch side, I have removed the clutch cover to get a better look at the clutches and the belts themselves. Take note that this does not have a spare belt with it. Spare belts are two to $300 a piece and you're gonna to wanna to have one. So factor that into your offer. Just look them over, make sure there's nothing crazy going on. What you wanna look for when you're looking at your belt is look at the teeth on these belts. See if there's any teeth that have notches out of them, they're worn down or missing. And also check to see if you see any weaving or any fraying on the sides of the belt indicating a bad belt and this belt overall looks to be in great shape. Well, you got the opportunity, peek around below the clutches, see if there's any signs of fluids leaking or anything of that nature like we talked about on the other side, and check your oil and make sure it is full of oil, which it is, could use a little bit, but no big deal. Come up here, because you can see some stuff through here. So basically what you want to do is anywhere you could get any access to looking inside the motor with your flashlight, you want to take a look and see if there's anything that stands out to you that shouldn't. Now, I don't have a compression gauge with me right now, but while you're in the engine bay, what you're going to want to do, if you have one with you, is test the compression. Now you want to Google what the compression of the motor should be for a strong engine and see if the sledge you're looking at's compression lines up with that. Now, now, if you don't have a compression gauge, there's another way to do this. Some people argue it is bad for the motor, others say it is not. And what you can do is unplug one of the cylinders 
and start the sled, pull it over, and as soon as it starts running, kill it. And what that does is it shows that each cylinder is strong enough to keep the motor running, signaling it has good compression. Now that we have inspected the outside of the sled, the underside of the sled, the engine bay, and we heard it run and everything seems good, it is time to make an offer. Since we're about to make an offer on the sled, what you want to take into consideration is the things that are wrong with it. Like we know this sled's going to need a track at some point, if not right away and we know we need carbide. And we also know that we don't have a spare belt on the sled. What you also wanna take in consideration too is when you're doing your Google research of the sled you're gonna look at, look at the market value of the sled. What is that exact sled with similar miles going for? Is the sludge you're going to look at too high? Is it priced really low being a red flag, meaning like maybe there's something wrong with it and they're trying to dump it? So you want to know the market value of the sludge you're going to look at before you actually go to look at it so you can make an appropriate offer and not spend way too much money or spend too little and end up losing money. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you buy a used snowmobile and not get ripped off like I have been in the past. Hopefully some of you guys found this useful and if you guys have any questions about buying a used sled, do not be afraid to reach out to me in the comments section on this video or on the Instagram DMs and I will help you guys out the best I can. If you guys enjoyed today's video, smash a huge thumbs up on today's video. Comment section below, let me know if there's anything I missed or other things that you guys like to do that I did not. And like I always say, if you guys are new here or you've been watching for a while and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.